Hey there YouTube, so you want to know about click detectors in Roblox. Well before we get started, if your Roblox studio looks like this, you're doing something wrong. Let me help you. Go to File, go to Settings, go to the Studio tab, click on Theme under the General section, and turn it to Dark. Please do this. Dark mode saves lives. It saves our eyes and it saves your eyes. But more importantly, it saves my eyes. So please turn on dark mode. Thank you. Okay, now that you've got dark mode activated, you better have, uh, let's get started. So you want to know how to use click detectors. Well, usually the reason you'd want to know that is you want to make a part clickable in a game. You want something to happen when a player clicks a part. Let's go create a part here. Uh, I don't know why it's neon green. Let's not make it neon green and kill my eyes as well. Uh, uh, yeah, here's the part. Ta-da. Well, right now, of course, when we go play it and we click on it, it does not do anything because it is a part and it doesn't have any coding to it. And it just, it's not clickable. It's just not clickable. It just doesn't do that. So we're going to stop that because that is nonsense. So of course, if we want a part to be clickable, we want to add a click detector. So let's go to the part here, click on the part, right click, insert object, and we're going to click on click detector. Or you can search it, click detector, da da, boom, we got a click detector. Right now, that, that means it's it's clickable, right? That uh, We did it, yay! Well, not quite, I mean, it doesn't do anything. I mean, the, the pointer finger comes up like, yay, uh, but it doesn't do anything on click. So uh, it's basically what we had before, but now you get a clicker finger thingy for no reason. Uh, let's actually make it do something. Uh, so how do we do that, Speedy? Well, let me show you. So let's go click on the part again, okay? So this is the part and this is the click detector. Let's rename this so it's not just part. Let's say click part or something, something different. And let's go under the click detector. Let's right click here, insert object, and let's enter a script. Oh, hello world, goodbye world. So you want to make this do something on click. Uh, let's make it do something very simple. Let's first put the click detector object into its own variable. So let's create a variable, local click detector. Cool, we have a variable called click detector. Now we got to assign it the value that is the click detector object, which right now, the parent of script, of our script here, the parent is the click detector. So we can actually just go script.parent. Ta-da, that actually equals the click detector if you put the script inside the click detector. Okay, we got it, yay. So how do we know when it gets clicked? Well, a click detector has an event and it is called mouse click. So let's go uh, reference the click detector variable, dot mouse click. You can actually see there's more events to here. Um, a click detector actually has multiple events, mouse click, mouse hover enter, mouse hover leave, right mouse click, and that's it. But we're going to focus on mouse click for today. So let's go mouse click. Okay, um, we got to go colon connect. Okay, cool. So what do we do now? Well, we have to add a function inside these parentheses. Most people just do this function add a parentheses delete the parentheses at the end and now just press enter and oh my goodness you have a code block that now runs when the the part gets clicked like actually though let's add a print statement inside here and let's go play the game right now and print statements get printed to the output so if you don't have your output uh section open for me, it's at the bottom here, um, but if it's not open or you can't find it, uh, you can go to the top here into view and the output button is here. So if you can click on it and make it visible, that is good for this tutorial. Now let's click the object. Oh my goodness, it it, it clicked. It, 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 it clicked like 13 times now. We did it. We, we, we got it to do something. Yay. Well, Let's do something a little bit different now. Um, let's make it know what player clicked the object. 
Okay, so what if we want to know what player clicked it? Right now it doesn't, it does not know. So how do we do it? Well, click detector dot mouse click, the, the event actually passes a parameter to your function and it passes the player value. So this is perfect. That's exactly what we wanted. So let's just put player into these parentheses. So basically we just created the variable player and now it is equal to the player that clicked it. Let's make another print statement and say player, whoops, player dot, whoops, dot name, uh, two periods, space, string, whoops, space, clicked me, exclamation point. What happens now? Well, you might assume it might say your username and then clicked me when you click it. Uh, you'd be right. So it says super speedy 101 clicked me. If you haven't figured out already, I'm super speedy 101. So that's why it says super speedy 101 clicked me. However, if it was you, let's say your name was, um, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking of a name, uh, the awesome man 101. Well, if you click this block, it would say the awesome man 101 clicked me. It wouldn't be my name because we're referencing the player that clicked it and we're taking their name. The player object has a lot of different functionality and not just your name. It can, it has properties of your user ID and all that stuff. So, uh, you can figure that out on your own, but, uh, yeah, so that's just a very simple print statement. Let's, uh, make the color of the block change. I guess a lot of people do this. When making a tutorial with click detectors, they make the block just like change colors randomly. Um, why? I uh, Beats me. But let's add a little variable here called click part. And that's just equal to script.parent.parent. .parent. Ta da! That's, that's the block. Click part is the block. I'm actually going to capitalize P. And click part. Whoops! That's not click part. That's click detector. Click part dot brick color equals brick color dot random so now when we click it oh my goodness it's a random color changing part that is amazing so one thing to note here guys is we're using a normal script so that means this gets replicated to all of the other players in the game like if, I, if a player changed the color of this block, everyone else would see the change. But what if you wanted it so that only the player who clicks it see the changes? Well, then you'd have to use a local script here. It wouldn't be in the part. You'd actually have to create a local script. Uh, follow me here. In the starter player, you open starter player and there should be starter player scripts. You can go insert object and you can create a local script. And this is where we would actually create the same thing this script does, but as a local script. So let's go copy and then paste this here. However, this is wrong because we are now not inside of the click detector anymore. So click detector would be equal to workspace dot click part dot click detector. And click part would just be workspace dot click part. And now it should work. So let's actually take this script and disable it. The one that we made before. Let's disable it by clicking the disabled button in its property. And now only this local script should work. And now let's go press play. And it should, if everything is correct, it should do the same thing. And it does. It does the same thing. And you might say, well, what's the difference, Speedy? It, it, it is the same. No, it's not. It's not the same. That is my answer. The reason is because I used a local script that's underneath my player. And what that means is that now when I click it, I see purple, but other people would see a different color because they haven't clicked the part yet. However, with our previous example using a server script, that would replicate to all the other players. That one, if I clicked it, would change the color for everyone. And I'll show you guys an example of what I mean. So I'm going to disable this local script and I'm going to re-enable the uh, server script inside the click detector. And I'm actually going to go to test tab and I'm going to create a local server so then I can simulate having two players in the game. Okay, so we've got our two players. It might be a little weird because like both of the players look the same because it's me and this is a local server. 
Um, these are both running on one computer right now um, because Roblox Studio can do that. I actually did not know that a little bit ago. Uh, like, oh, oh, it's been a while since I've known it, but it was cool to find it. Um, watch this. So as uh, I guess I'll take player one here. This is player one that I'm moving the camera right now. Player one wants to click the block. Player two is looking at the block, I guess, from afar. Um, player one clicks the block. Look at this. So now both of the colors get changed. So player two sees the color change that player one created. And if we click it more, we can see it changes on both screens. Okay, that's what a server script does. It changes it for everyone. Let's clean this up. Okay, now let's disable the script and let's re-enable the local script that we created. Um, and let's go test that out again with two players. Okay, we got our two players back in here. So remember guys, this is the local script. So we've got player two looking at the block again, okay? Player one wants to click the block and change the color. Player one clicks the block. It turns whatever this color is, but look at player two. The color did not change. It only changed for the player that clicked it. Oh my goodness, it didn't replicate. So let's try it again. Okay, no changes on the other side of the screen. Well, okay, uh, let's say player two now wants to click it. Player two clicks it and we get like blue. Oh my goodness, it did not change player one's color. So this just shows you how using a local script will replicate to no one but yourself and using a server script replicates to everyone in the game. So you gotta keep that in mind when using click detectors. Do you want only the player who clicks it to see whatever it does? Or do you want the whole server to see what happens? This is a very important concept that kind of looks at the server client relationship. It's a much more advanced topic, but this is the broad sense of it. So guys, that was a click detector tutorial. If you guys have any more questions, any at all, comment them below. I'll love to answer them. If you enjoyed this, please leave a like. I will in the description, I'll leave a link to the place that's uncopy locked. So I hope you liked it. Stay tuned for more. I'm thinking of a lot more ideas that I can do. Thanks for watching guys. See you in the next tutorial.